Are you frustrated with higher interest rates? Well, an adjustable rate mortgage might reduce that hit to your pocket. And you're possibly wondering, is this the right strategy for me? Well, I'm gonna go over what an ARM is, I'll talk about how they're different today than they were in 2008, and I'll give you my professional opinion on whether I think you should pursue going after an arm or not. So an adjustable rate mortgage is exactly what it says. It adjusts, but here's the caveat. So it's usually fixed for a certain period of time, normally three, five, seven, or 10 years, and then after that is going to adjust in certain increments in a time period. So for instance, you may have something called a 7-1 arm, which means that for the first seven years, the interest rate is fixed. And then for every year after that, the interest is going to go up or go down. Now, how it moves is based off of a cap. And normally you'll see something like 414. So you may have a 7-1 arm with a 414 cap, which means in the first initial rate adjustment, the interest rate cannot go higher or lower than 4%. And what I mean is it can't go 4% up or 4% down. The next number one is the subsequent interest rate can go no higher or lower than 1% percent up or one percent down and the last number that four means that over the life of the loan the interest rate can go up four percent or down four percent in any direction now these loans can be somewhat risky because they usually have a lower teaser rate than what the prevailing market provides but after those teaser rates reset or adjust the loan could go up or it could go down just like i explained earlier and this is what happened in 2008 where there were some people who got adjustable rate mortgages that were in a maybe like two Two, three, four percent teaser rate, but then in 2008, rates shot up to like five, six percent. So imagine you have a teaser rate at three percent, and by the time your rate resets, it's now 6%. Essentially, your monthly mortgage payments have doubled. And that's just taking into consideration that that's the principal and interest on the loan. Some of these adjustable rate mortgages had interest only payments, which means that people were only paying the interest, nothing toward the principal, which made it harder to build equity. Others, you kind of could pick whatever you wanted to pay that it might not even been enough to cover the interest. So essentially, you were going to have negative amortization, meaning you would have more principal on the loan than when you originally started. Now, when the housing market wound up crashing, there were a couple of things that happened and I won't get into all the details of it, but a lot of these loans were spliced together and sold to investors. Well, when people started to foreclose, investors still wanted their money. But how do you squeeze blood from a turnip? You can't necessarily. And that's what helped cause some of the implosion that happened around the 2008 financial meltdown. Now, here we are in 2022, housing prices are high, interest rates are going up, and it's created some affordability issues. And that's where the popularity of adjustable rate mortgages has come in at. Now, these are different than they were in 2008, particularly due to the Dodd-Frank Act. Now, this was a bill that was instituted because of what happened in 2008, which essentially regulates the types of lending practices that financial institutions and banks are able to perform. What else is different is that those arms were based on something called the LIBOR or the London Interbank Offer Rate. Today, however, something called the Secured Overnight Financial Rate or SOFR is being used. Now, if you currently have an adjustable rate mortgage, it may be tied to the LIBOR. So you wanna to talk to your lender because the LIBOR is steadily being phased out, I believe by June, 2023, every new adjustable rate mortgage is going to use SOFR. But for everybody who's grandfathered in, you just wanna check with your lending institution to find out if your adjustable rate is tied to the LIBOR. If it is, ask them what index they plan on tying it to once that expires. It could be the SOFR, it could be some other index. So talk to your lender because that is going to be information you need in terms of making a decision whether you wanna stay in that arm or whether you wanna refinance out. Currently though, what we're seeing is something called a convertible arm or what's commonly known as a hybrid, which gives you the best of both worlds. You have pieces of an adjustable rate mortgage and pieces of a fixed rate mortgage. And here's how this works. So for instance, you have a seven year, seven year arm or seven one arm that says it's gonna be fixed at this interest rate for seven years and then readjust after that year to whatever the prevailing rate is based off of that index. If you have a hybrid arm, you can say, I wanna have this rate at the adjustment period. I wanna lock in this rate for the entire remaining portion of my loan. Or you can say, you know what, I'd rather keep the arm and I'll let it adjust every single year or every six months. Totally up to you. Now, 
Do I think arms are beneficial? Yes, they can be. Are they beneficial for everybody? Absolutely not. If you are somebody who plans on being in the house for an extended period of time, an arm may be right for you. I would steer away from doing the three-year arm because it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility in terms of time. The five can be somewhat useful, but normally what we're seeing right now is the seven year arm. There's also the 10 year arm, but I think that comes at a little bit of a premium because it's a longer period of time, which means that it may not be as profitable to keep you in that lower interest rate. So there may be some tacked on fees or other things that the lender is gonna bake in because let's face it, they wanna make money too. The seven year arm could be pretty beneficial for you. There's a chance that you can get into this adjustable rate mortgage and then refinance out before the adjustment period actually hits. Now, in order to refinance, you're going to have to re-qualify for the loan. So you're going to have to show your bank statements. You're going to have to show proof of income. You're going to have to show your credit scores. They're going to run all of that as though you were applying for a mortgage all over again. Here's where it can get a little bit risky at. If you do not have a job that's steady, an adjustable rate mortgage not, might not be good for you. If you have income that fluctuates, an adjustable rate mortgage might not be good for you. However, if your job is steady and you can afford to, let's say your rate is going to jump two or three percent you don't know this but let's just assume you're thinking i can go two or three percent higher on my monthly mortgage payment if that's the case and you're still comfortable an adjustable rate mortgage might be good for you now why would somebody want to choose an adjustable rate mortgage because one you lower the amount of interest that you're paying right so it could be anywhere from a half a percent to a full percent which could be a huge difference in the not only the monthly mortgage that you're paying but also it could be the difference between your purchasing power. So let's go through an example of using an arm versus a fixed rate and let's see how these can differ based on today's prevailing rates. So let's go to one of our trusted sources, Google. We're gonna type in today's mortgage rates and I particularly like to look at NerdWallet. It seems pretty good, they're pretty accurate. So let's compare the 30 year fix and the 7-1 arm. So let's see, assuming a $600,000 purchase price and 5% down, that rate for a let's um, let's go back over 30 year fix was 6.822 so we'll go back over put that in scroll down and click calculate let's see so today's so four thousand two hundred forty five dollars all right let's go back and look at uh, the seven one arm was like six point two 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 that and let's see four thousand twenty dollars and five cents would be the payment on a seven one arm so we're talking about forty two hundred and some change versus four thousand and some change which is about two hundred twenty five dollars per month that you would be saving each month that's about twenty seven hundred dollars per year but let's look at that over the seven year period. That's almost $19,000 that you would save. Keep in mind that interest rates are not the only component to home ownership. You also have to consider the down payment and closing costs. However, if these are hurdles to you as well, you might wanna check out these videos I did on programs that offer no money down, no mortgage insurance, and no closing costs.